Quantum biology is coming and you and I and all of us have to be ready even before it enters the realm of science. Now, even before we enter the world of quantum biology, let's talk about quantum computing. Now, the news has it that today, Karnataka government has allotted around seven acres of land only for quantum computing. So they have allocated a special SCZ where now Bangalore will have the first quantum city of the world where it will contribute $20 billion to the economy. Now, having said that, this is an excellent hotbed for research of the future. But why Karnataka government is doing this today is because quantum computing is the future of computing. Now, let me give you an example. The fastest supercomputer in this world, which is with US Department of Energy, it is called as Front Frontier Supercomputer. It will need 10 septillion years to figure out a computational calculation. And the same calculation was done by Google's Willow quantum chip in five minutes. So 10 septillion years is one followed by 25 zeros. Now that's the number of years the supercomputer of today will take to solve a mathematical problem. And the same mathematical problem was solved by Google's Willow chip, which is a quantum chip in five minutes. Imagine. It's huge amount of time saving, but at the same time, a lot of potential and a lot of ethical dilemmas also it opens with. Now, when we combine quantum computing with artificial intelligence, we are looking at some huge breakthroughs. So in the first part of this video, we are going to talk about how exactly quantum computing works. And then we will look at what you need to do to implement quantum computing and quantum biology and how quantum biology will re revolutionize the biological research. Okay, so there are two different things. Actually, we are trying to merge in the same video, which is quantum computing and quantum biology. The first part will be quantum computing impacting biological research. And the second part will be how quantum biology will take things forward. Now, if you are a computer enthusiast and if you are in biology, but then this video is going to give you massive insights of what's going to happen in the next 20 years. So for now, we all are excited about AI and algorithm and the, the, the Python and R studio, right? But imagine all of this is like outdated. 10 years from today, it's all outdated and people are like AI can code for itself. And now we are talking about AI humanoid robots, right? So now these humanoid robots will need more processing power, right? Imagine you not doing the titration, but the humanoid robot working in experiments in biological labs. You're just giving instructions just like ChatGPT. So today ChatGPT, you can give instructions textually. But what if the robots of tomorrow, which will consume more power and will need more processing power, will be powered by quantum computing on a shared server somewhere across the globe, right? This is what makes things exciting, right? So now that I've shown you the impact, let's jump back to what is quantum computing. So let me just flip a coin here. So as you can see this coin, it is rotating on its own, but after some time it stops because the energy which I had transferred gets spent. But quantum computing is all about qubits. Now these qubits are just like, so basically computers have zero and one, that is binary. So all the information is stored in zero and one. So qubits can transition from zero and one very fast. Okay. But they need to be thermally stable. So we have to reduce the temperature of the supercomputer at zero or minus levels. Now that is where the challenge is as of today. But there are more uh, companies coming up with room temperature quantum computing, right? So it is like, you know, remember the ENIAC model of computers. Now those computers were big and huge and uh, nobody, nobody then thought about, you know, personal computer and laptops, right? But the same way today we can think of laptops. The same way the processor, which is taking so much of energy to just produce the temperature to minus zero, that is able to stabilize the quantum processor. And that is where these qubits are interchanging zero and one faster, right? Now, 
दिस इज कॉल्ड एज इंटेंगलमेंट और क्वांटम इंटेंगलमेंट सो इंटेंगल्ड क्यूबिट्स वर्क इन कॉन्सर्ट अलाउिंग अलगोरिदम्स टू मैनिपुलेट मल्टीपल क्यूबिट्स सो दैट दे अफेक्ट ईच अदर एंड इनिशिएट अ वास्ट कैस्केडिंग सीरीज ऑफ कैलकुलेश नाउ दिस माइंड बेंडिंग कैपेबिलिटीज इज द बेसिस ऑफ क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग पावर नाउ हैविंग सेड दैट प्रॉब्लम इज very less people can comprehend this let's take it i showed you one um, particular coin but imagine there are 100 or 1000 such coins okay and each coin is one qubit and we toss at the same time and at the same time you can see head and tail just like how i rotated right so this is the power of quantum computing more the number of qubits more the computational power so 100 magical uh, coins rotating at the same time and calculating at the same time this is the kind of it's like a 100 coin toss at the same time this is huge and that is what helps us calculate faster now quantum computing holds the promise in biology and material science eventually a sufficiently advanced computational machine or a quantum computing will come into picture which will be able to model molecular structures with unprecedented precision now this will potentially transform drug discovery new drug discovery and pharmaceuticals and in the development of new kind of batteries and cheap evs and all of that now at the same time this also opens up a plethora of problems because today's encryption which we have that which we call it as https can be easily broken through quantum computing but what is the impact of quantum computing now on biological research let's look at that now having said that if i say that quantum computing is really uh, working great my question to you is how does it impact biological research now the first thing which i told you is molecular simulation and drug discovery now the current molecular dynamics simulation is run into limits because modeling of large biomolecules like protein requires a lot of computing power now the second thing will be quantum computers will be able to simulate electron interactions in proteins enzymes and ligands exactly via quantum chemistry algorithms like vqe and qpe now this could speed up drug target validation toxicity prediction and binding fnt calculation so we talked about how quantum computing is impacting the drug discovery now let's look at protein folding and structural biology protein folding is combinatorial nightmare for classical computers because we don't have that kind of computing power we cannot really predict and it requires a lot of chips right so quantum annealers or variational quantum algorithms can optimize protein structures more efficiently predicting stable folds and misfolds and this will accelerate the synthetic biology and enzyme design which is very complicated by the way now we'll look at genomics how quantum machines can handle uh, genomics so they can handle high dimensional biological data for example genomics transcriptomics and proteomics they could detect subtle genetic patterns linked to diseases that the classical machine learning is missing as of today quantum inspired machine learning will allow personalized medicine at scale so today what we say okay for one patient we can generate a personalized medicine tomorrow we will be able to do it for 1000 patients at the same time or lakhs of patients at the same time that is the power of quantum computing same impact we'll see in systems biology biological systems such as metabolic networks neural signaling ecological interactions all of this is nonlinear and interdependent so what quantum computing will do is it can simulate complex adaptive systems better than classical high performance computing this will help us detect and predict diseases faster ecosystem dynamics better and cellular decision making so we can actually look at the complicated biological data and analyze it with a faster computer than what we have today so what do you need today if you are not ready for the quantum biology or the quantum chemistry or the quantum computing of the future my dear friend you are going to be left out now how to be ready for quantum computing and quantum biology you have to be ready for the technologies of today at least which is of course python r artificial intelligence machine learning algorithms you have to learn and develop because eventually all this will get plugged into quantum computers so if you don't learn the technology of today you cannot plug it into the quantum computing and that's what i keep telling you quantum computing is the future of biology quantum computing and ai when merged together we can generate humanoid robots which could be doing experiments alongside us and assist us right so 
that is where my point of view is if you learn AI in biology, if you learn data science and then you plug in the future into quantum computing, we are looking at an enormous success in biological research at scale. And that is why we are so excited about stacking single molecule dynamics, neural activity, tumor growth, all of this we will be able to predict at unprecedented accuracy, which is not possible today. These computers are only located at different parts of the world. Of course, if you want to get there, you will have to go to maybe Sweden or Netherlands or Greenland, wherever these computers are, or US. But if you learn AI in biology, data science, you can easily get into these kind of research. You can get a job in Meta, which is doing research on quantum computing. You, you can do, uh, you can get into Google, which is doing uh, research on quantum biology. So this is where the quantum era of biology is about to open. And the initiation in India has already happened. Karnataka government has already initiated by allocating the land. Now they're going to create labs, quantum biology and quantum chemistry and quantum uh, computing labs in Karnataka, Bengaluru, so that you can get your research exposure right here. Now, what is exactly impressive about these computers are, see, quantum computing was there since 1981, okay? But now only, recently, they have come up with the Majorana 1 chip, which holds the potential to scale up to 1 million qubits in the palm of your hand. So this small processor has 1 million qubits. Remember when I told you, the more the number of qubits, okay, so each coin is one qubit, there are 1 million qubits in this much of palm. So that means we can do more. We have a stronger processor, just like the NVIDIA chips, right? So that is where quantum development, this is actually developed by Microsoft. Now with just eight, eight physical qubits, the prototype which we have based on the property called as topological superconductivity, you can get to thousands of reliable logical qubits and you will see industrial value added in chemistry and that's what Microsoft is talking about. First commercial quantum machine which is called as IBM Q System 1 was launched in 2019 that's been six years and among its contribution in the field of QiskIt an open source software platform for writing algorithms that can run on quantum computers IBM ones are just not the other ones. There are many other companies which are into this race. McKinsey report of 2024 says that there are 261 startups as of today, and there is an investment of so far $7 billion already into quantum biology and quantum computing. 104 of these startups are in US and Canada, 24 are in UK, and now we are going to see with this new land allocation by Karnataka government, a lot of quantum computing and quantum biology startups coming in Bangalore, India. So this is the place to be in, and so far we don't have any data about, by the way, for China. So China also must be having a lot of quantum computing startups. It's a closed economy, so we don't know. So having said that, we have seen a lot of success in the quantum computing and quantum biology era, but the question to be asked is, how the biotech companies of 2030 would, would look like, okay? So we are in 2025, right? 2025, you are looking at bioinformatics and artificial intelligence booming, okay? But if quantum computing comes into picture and we combine that with AI, and possibly that is where the humanoid robots will start working in wet labs. So by 2030, we are looking at companies that will integrate quantum computing, AI and synthetic biology. They will be, there will be research labs which will be working on quantum powered biological twins, viral replicas of cells, tissues, patients to simulate treatments before administering them. Then we have, we will have startups and CROs, of course Biotechnica is also interested in this, which could offer quantum as a service for biotech, bridging the quantum platforms and biological problems. So you must have seen the cloud computing, right? So cloud computing was, you don't own the server, you don't have the server, but you can log in, you can install your software and you can work. So cloud computing in biology is what is there today. But when quantum computing in biology comes as a cloud, imagine what we are capable of. The entire biological discovery will shift from local server-based based research in bioinformatics to design-based science, where we don't just discover biology, but design life systems computationally. So now I think this is a big boost to the biological research. I'm sure if you are interested, you can learn more about the quantum way 
of or the quantum basis of photosynthesis if you go and find nature already works at the quantum level right so we are about to unlock the how the electrons protons and neutrons interact when a protein folds when an enzyme interacts when a dna gets denatured or a rna is formed or a protein is formed all of this we will be able to analyze at the quantum level we will be able to fix at the quantum level we will be able to process at the quantum level so let me know if you feel excited about the quantum biology and quantum chemistry we did do a quantum uh, biology workshop a few uh, days back i will ask the team to probably uh, put the recording link in the description you can still go and register for that and uh, watch the recording so you will get a lot of insights on quantum biology and quantum chemistry and quantum computing however this is the science of the future but for the science of the future if you want to learn you'll have to learn bioinformatics artificial intelligence and machine learning today so my intention of making this video was not to tell you that hey quantum computing is coming be ready my job is to keep you at the forefront of technology and see how a parallel technology is going to in interact and influence your future in biotech and that's what quantum computing and quantum biology does to your career so guys here's a chance you can enroll in biotechnica's data science internship and then you can be ready for the future where quantum computing will merge with data science in biology and then you will be a forefront scientist see all those scientists who are sitting right now in the wet lab they will be outdated they are bound to be outdated you are the updated scientists of tomorrow for but for that you have to be the action taker of today enroll in biotechnica's data science internship and we will be sure to make you future ready all the best